Good afternoon. Hiya. Good afternoon. My name is David Thomas, I'm ECA Education Training Manager, uh, and this is Gary Parker, uh, one of our uh, technical assessors, or um, uh, that's your title there, isn't it? That's, that's it. it. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, we're here at Voltman, uh, and this is one of the series of webinars that we're doing in association with uh, Voltman on uh, issues that affect our industry. Um, today's is going to be on the 17th edition of the uh, wiring regulations requirements for residual current devices. Um, and we're going to go into you know, some of the basic requirements um, that, are, that are needed. Mm -hmm. So you'll see there's a change in the, the layout of the screen you should see now. So the first question we're asking you there is what type of organisation are you representing? And you just select the one that's uh, most appropriate. Um, so we've got uh, 10 electrical contractors at the moment. Uh, so if you could do that. The second question is, in your view, in your view um, is the current requirement to fit RCDs practical? Um, and that is a question uh, that we'll come back to um, uh, sort of later. So while you're doing, uh, we can stay with question one. That's it. Okay, while we're while you're filling that in, um, we'll see. Uh, all right, let me just change the presentation here. Okay, we've only got. Uh, I'm just giving the people a chance to. Only seem to have about uh, thirty people responding to the survey at the moment. Um, Most people tend to think that RCDs are practical, or well, the current requirements for RCDs is practical, so that's good. That's quite an interesting split though, isn't it? We've got 28 to 2 there. Mm. Um, so we've got only 30 people out of the uh, 41 people who have logged in actually are responding. Please respond to this because it's, uh, it, it's not a catch question, it's just so we know who you are, uh, where you are, what your thoughts are, so you can interact with us. So, so please, please take part in these. Um, majority of people are electrical contractors. Um, we have uh, a couple of industry organisations, and uh, we do have some users, uh, facility managers, which is that. Okay, so you're all, you're all welcome. Um, okay, so just to finish, then we've got a, a close um, a presentation that we need to go through just here. Um, a lot of what we're we've been saying is to try and get you to really look at what the wiring regulations are saying for the use of RCDs. Yes. There's too many people just go onto autopilot, throw an RCD in, and there's no real consideration. So, yes, that there's been a requirement for RCDs from uh, the 80s. Um, we've got additional protection. Request. That's right, yep. You, uh, in a lot of cases, need to provide additional protection for circuits or for cables, but RCDs are not the only way you could use other things such as different cabling or other forms of protection but rcds fundamentally don't provide overload or overcurrent protection they are there as a standalone device and need to be used in uh, consideration with other devices okay most special locations will require rcds at some point yet yeah, more special locations will, will require an rcd of certain ratings mm -hmm. quite often slightly higher than the 30 milliamp that you would use for the additional protection but Either way, you must always test your RCDs regularly. Okay. Um, so thank you for your attention. We've got uh, a, a few questionnaires that we'd like you to finish off um, uh, as a close. Um, as I say, it's useful to have that level of feedback. Um, if there's any other questions that you would like to bring forward, then yes, please put them in the chat pod and we will respond to those uh, as soon as we can.